Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Dirk Delirium here. <clears throat> you can find me on Facebook at Dirk Delirium. Uh, you can also reach me on our YouTube channel, which is Scared Sober Delirium Tremens. Uh, again, that's YouTube. And we also have the Facebook group, which we'd love to have you join if you haven't already. And uh, all you do is go to Facebook and um, search under groups. Search alcoholics slash addicts living recovery. And uh, that started with the Wilkins Group of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, it's a recovery-based site. We're not brand-specific. So uh, <clears throat> please sign up and join us there. You'll see some pretty cool stuff. Uh, we got a little over 700 members right now, and uh, it's pretty neat. All right, so some basic housekeeping again. Uh, Dirk, real alcoholic, real addict, real mess. Anytime I put anything in my body that's not supposed to be there um, and changes the way I feel. Uh, I am not the face of AA, NA, CA, HA, or NEA. I'm simply a face of recovery. So uh, we're glad you're here, and um, we hope you're enjoying the series on the steps. So this is the second half of step seven. Um, as you know, we have uh, posted step one through six, and then the first half of seven already, so you can peruse through that at your leisure. And the reason that's here on Scared Sober is because a lot of people that I found in my experience are scared to work the steps. Um, why is that? They just don't know how to do it. They're, uh, they've not been given clear-cut direction or the direction they've been given is so loose that they just fly through these things and they never put any work into it. And until I put work and effort into working my steps, working my steps fearlessly and thoroughly, uh, I could not get sober. So, that being said, uh, we finished up um, with step seven, the uh, first four questions, which was how has my understanding and my higher power grown? How have the previous six, six steps prepared me for step seven? How does being aware of my own humility help in working step seven? And how do I plan to ask God of my understanding to remove my shortcomings? And if you remember from step six, I have a shitload of shortcomings. Uh, I think I only listed 20, but I probably could have expounded. Um, so anyway, that brings us to uh, five through nine. And the questions are this. Um, how does the spiritual principle of surrender work for me in step seven? Six, am I comfortable with prayer and meditation, even if it means making up my own, which is perfectly fine. It's a God of my understanding, of your understanding. It is not a religious program. And I don't give a shit what your concept of a higher power is, as long as you have one and you know you're not it. As long as I know that I'm not God and there's something bigger than me, all the rest takes care of itself. Um, has my sense of perspective or reality been out of proportion lately? Uh, have there been times when I've been able to stop from acting on a character defect and practice this principle, a principle, uh, spiritual principle rather instead? And then nine, are there any shortcomings that have been diminished in their power over me or removed from my life? Um, it's a it's a mouthful. Yeah, let me grab this. Step seven continued. So that brings us to uh, question five. How does the spiritual principle of surrender work for me in step seven? Uh, okay, cool and a good question. Um, for this real alcoholic addict, surrender and humility go hand in hand. When I finally admitted, without any lurking notion, that someday that I can drink or use, then I'm able to surrender to the fact that this is an, that this is over, and I never have to use again. You have, I had to get to the point where I admitted that fully. Um, this is the beginning. Now my character defects will still have to be addressed and dealt with on a daily basis to prevent me from taking steps backwards and fall back into active addiction. If I do not at least try to continue to do the next thing right, my self-will is sure to return and I am setting myself up for inevitable failure. I have proven this to myself time and time again. If I have not worked these steps thoroughly and don't continue to work them, I am going to relapse. It is not a question of if, it's a question of when. Uh, I consider myself a recovered alcoholic and addict because the book tells me, the one I follow, um, that I have recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body, but that doesn't mean that I won't be in recovery for the rest of my life. This is all contingent on uh, my spiritual maintenance. And again, I said right here, uh, 
as long as I try to do the next thing right. Notice I didn't say the next right thing. And I always say, do the next right thing. Uh-uh. For me, doing the next right thing was my will. Doing the next right thing is the God of my understanding's will. And there's a difference because my will always fucked things up. Always. So uh, I don't choose to address my will today. My will is for entertainment only. <laughs> but <clears throat> having taken a solid look at my defects, discussed them with my sponsor, as we did in step six, uh, I became willing to have them removed. This opened the door for the gift of humility and allowed me to thoroughly work this step. This is imperative if I actually wish to live in peace with myself. Okay? So the next question is, am I comfortable with prayer and meditation, even if it means making up my own? Uh, and again, it's not a religious program. Prayer and meditation are to a, something that's bigger than you. It just doesn't have to be a biblical or um, organized religion deity, if you will. Uh, if it is, that's fine too. So am I comfortable with prayer and meditation, even if it means making up my own? Yes, most definitely. The paradigm shift in my thinking about God, of my understanding, and my attitude change about my higher power has completely changed the way in which I am able to connect with my God, my God of my understanding. This is a 180 degree shift as I came into the programs of uh, recovery in atheist and an agnostic, or in other words, a non-believer. Um, I first learned that the God of my understanding is not some entity that cannot be bothered with me, um, that I can only cry out to that God of my understanding in desperation, please save me this time and I'll never do it again, all that kind of foxhole prayer bullshit. Um, this attitude for me proved less than limiting. Uh, my higher power today, on the contrary, is a sense of both calm and inspiration that I can call on at any moment of any day or time. Being said, meditation and prayer are simply my time to talk with my God. And remember, this is not a religious program. This is the God of my own conception. As I've said, I do not have to even understand my own conception of a God or higher power. I don't have to know what that is. I just have to know for certain I'm not it. And I'm not. So when it comes to prayer and meditation, I'm completely comfortable. I do not have a structured way in which I do either. I don't. Um, some people do. Uh, nor do I follow any specific recited prayer regimen. Um, with the exception of the serenity prayer, uh, but we have studied that. We've gone through the serenity prayer, and I'd be happy to address that if you have any questions. Um, hit me on Facebook one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and um, I'd be happy to talk with you either live or uh, communicate over the internet. Um, so rather, my prayers are more of a spiritual conversation or a simple conversation that I have throughout the day with my higher power. I usually don't get answers immediately, but they do always come to fruition. Uh, it's pretty neat. Okay, seven, question seven. Has my sense or perspective of reality been out of proportion lately? It can happen in sobriety and in active addiction. Uh, no, I can say with confidence it is not. Through the programs of recovery, I have learned that with humility, I can easily be right-sized. This often begins with my expectations of others. If I don't set my expectations too high, I am less likely to be disappointed, and when I'm not let down, I don't get angry. Imagine that. Uh, and that doesn't lead to resentments. What happens when I'm let down? I get angry. And what happens with anger? It leads to resentments. And what happens to resentments? They're the number one fucking offender for addicts and alcoholics. So I don't have room for that in my life. So uh, I don't get angry and it doesn't lead to resentments. As we know, resentments are the number one offender when it comes to relapse for addicts like me. So humility keeps me even keel and prevents that perspective from becoming skewed or out of proportion. That brings us to number eight. Have there been times when I have been able to stop from acting on a character defect and practice a spiritual principle instead? Interesting. Let me uh, light a cigarette real quick. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, absolutely. Of course, if there haven't, um, I'm doing something wrong. So let's explore that. 
So yes, absolutely. Am I able to do this 100% of the time? Absolutely not. That would be a pipe dream, and I never will. That would be perfection, and I'm far from it, uh, so this will be a lifelong work in progress for this addict and alcoholic. However, being aware of these defects paired with the level of humility is the first step in being able to act on a spiritual principle uh, versus react to a situation. Um, I think we covered that in depth, but I will reiterate. When I react, that means I'm gonna give you my knee-jerk reaction to whatever the situation is right now, and it's almost always gonna be wrong. Uh, when I take time, pause when agitated, review what I'm gonna say, think things through, I'm more likely to come up with a better answer for both myself and whoever I'm having that uh, disagreement with. Um, it always comes back for this real alcoholic to the decision to respond versus react. When I'm able to recognize a defect rising out of me, I can think things through. Choose my response, if you will, and recognize whether that response will be damaging or hurtful towards others. By taking the time to do this, process this, I am then able to catch that defect of character and practice a spiritual principle instead. And it works. I love this question. Number nine. Are there any shortcomings that have been diminished in their power over me or removed from my life? Gone. Uh, I can say without a doubt that all of my shortcomings have and will continue to be diminished as long as I'm able to recognize and be aware of them first. Uh, if I do not catch them, I will fail and be left to make amends. <laughs> Which is okay. We're going to do that. We're human. Uh, but less is more. Understand this happens often. After all, I am and always will be an alcoholic and an addict. I am also only human. Being said, I do not believe these shortcomings will ever be completely removed or eradicated from my life in the sense that my obsession to drink and use has been. The obsession to drink and use for me is gone. Uh, my God, my understanding has lifted that. My shortcomings, on the other hand, are always going to be there. Uh, therefore, it's a lifelong practice. It's not a um, light switch in the sense that uh, the obsession has been lifted. Um, at least that's how it works for me. So, uh, my obsession to drink or use has been lifted. That, thank God, no longer dominates my every moment. Character defects or shortcomings, if you will, can only be removed as they crop up on a situation by situation basis. And this, again, is achieved through a level of humility. As an alcoholic and addict in recovery, we will never be responsible for our first initial thought, ever. We're going to have that thought, <clears throat> and it's always wrong. Uh, our minds just go there. We are, however, entirely responsible for our second thought and our first action. That's how we act on that. Uh, and this is when recognizing uh, the defect and responding to them becomes imperative. So it's, a, uh, it's kind of funny because step six and step seven are two of the shortest steps that we view in uh, any book of recovery. Uh, the 12 steps are all based off of the original large uh, blue and color book, <laughs> uh, which is the one I choose to follow. But again, I don't have any brand of recovery that I, um, that I promote because they all work as long as they have a 12-step program and you're able to follow it. Um, when I read these steps, and I have gone through many sponsors, many, uh, and back in the uh, olden days when I was uh, trying to find the easier, softer way and I wanted a sponsor that uh, would accept less than more, these were steps that generally were said to me, oh, these you just do on your own. And I'm like, oh, really? Okay, well then I'm done. Um, but that's not the case. So that's why we tore step six and step seven apart. Um, I spent more time on step six and seven than I did on my fourth step inventory and my fifth step, which was sharing my... Uh, defects with myself, my God, my understanding, and another human being. So um, my only advice is, again, this. Do these things fearlessly, thoroughly, and honestly. Honestly with yourself, because if you don't, you're the only one that's going to fail. Um, you're only going to bullshit yourself. I can bullshit my sponsor. I can bullshit my peers. 
I can lie with a straight face. I'm an alcoholic and addict. We're good at that. But if I do that, the only one that's going to fail in the long run is me. And for me, this is, and I'll say it again, life or death. And there's no in between. So I'm really glad you guys are here. Um, I really hope this helps one person. If it does, if it makes going through the steps a little bit easier, um, then all this is worth it. Um, if, uh, if there are uh, just a small few of you out there, the critical ones that say, this needs to be left in the room, say, hey, well, bullshit. Uh, my job is simple. In the programs of recovery, uh, my primary purpose is this, is to stay sober, which I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna do what I did yesterday. And the uh, second part of that is to help other alcoholics and addicts achieve recovery. And um, we will take any means and ways we can to do that. So uh, I appreciate your time. I hope you found this of interest. And uh, we'll be posting step eight in the uh, very near future. I'm so glad you're here. And with that being said, I appreciate one of my sponsors doing a little filming for me. And we are out.